the first thing, thing to acknowledge is that the reason we're in this battle is because this is the battle that the Guru recommends. Yeah? We don't come from a tradition where the Guru says, take yourself away from Maya and go sit in a mountain somewhere and just do meditation. Because you could take yourself away from all of your work and your, your commitments and just go sit in a mountain somewhere. But the Guru doesn't recommend that technique to us. So we have to take comfort in the fact that actually we're doing, even living our worldly life, we're doing what the Guru recommends. Because the Guru has experienced that. So Guru talks about the hardest path is the one which is within Maya, the most challenging path. So why would the Guru give us the most challenging path? The reason the Guru gives us the most challenging path is because all the meditators, the sadhus before them, took themselves out of Maya. Look at Buddha, look at all of these great meditators. They, they were all achieving the same level of Gyan, the same merging, but they never found a way that was for everyone. So the Guru has given us a technique that's for everyone in our everyday practice. And the technique is Nam. So the Guru gives us a technique that while you're in your work, Nam Simran has to be going on. You have to be actually saying Nam Simran while you're just doing everyday things. So you're chopping your wood or whatever it is that you're working on. That, that technique has to be where you have to get so comfortable with doing Simran in Maya and taking yourself out of Maya. Now, one of the ways to do that is again part of mindset. You know, if you're sitting in the Gurdwara early in the morning, or if you're sitting at home and you're reading your Nitanim, one of the biggest mistakes that we do is when we close our Gurdwara, when we stop our Nitanim, and we do the Fateh Waigurji Khalsa, Waigurji Ki Fateh, there's a switch off mechanism in our mind that says, Nitanim done, now I can start my day. That's the barrier. The point at which you stop your Nitanim, and that bit when you close the Gurkha and you say your Fateh, that's a part of your mind that says, okay, thank you, I've done my duty, now go do your worldly duty. That is a very significant thing that we do, which we should be mindful of. When you stop your Simran in the morning, and even if it's get up for five minutes, give yourself five minutes, before you get out of bed, you just say Why Guru for a couple of minutes, whatever it is that is our practice. When you finish it, don't finish it. What I mean by that is, as soon as you stop sitting there doing that Nithinim, keep that Nithinim going. Keep the Simran going. So you go to the bathroom, you're brushing your teeth, why group, why group, why group. Having a shower, why group, why group. Eating breakfast, yeah? Then we have to get into the habit of doing this. None of this falls straight away, yeah? And nobody's saying that, you know, it's easy or it's, it's like, you know, it's so, it's so many people have achieved it, why am I the only one that hasn't achieved it? No, this isn't the easy path. But the path is to have it within Maya. And part, part of that is actually every day, every moment, we have to try and find a way that we can incorporate what the Guru teach us, teaches us in everyday life. And the way that I've, I found that is that if you're just doing any activity, anything that doesn't require you to be having a, a thought right now, you know, like when you're driving, you can be driving and not really, you don't, your mind is all over, the, you can be planning a holiday while you're driving. But you can also be doing Simran at the same time. So unless you're having a conversation with a client or something like that, and that needs your mind to be aware, or you're actually figuring out some calculations, something, that's when you can't do Simran. That's because you're having to literally work and use your mind. But the majority of the day, we don't actually have to use our mind. Our mind is just going in all directions because it's free. When you're washing the dishes at home, when you're cooking, all these things don't really require a lot of mental focus. That kind of stuff can happen even when you're hoovering or whatever you're doing at home. So, during those times, we have to get into the habit of just reciting Naam. And how do you start that? Start by doing it out loud. Start doing it out loud and then slowly, slowly it should become part of the everyday practice.